Hey guys, it's Doc and today we're going to talk about soil temperatures and how they impact your lawn and just about everything you do outside. So hold on one sec. Hey guys, uh, soil temperature is pretty important. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over a few different things. I'm going to point you in a couple directions and resources that you can use. The first one I'm going to point to is down in the description down below, I'm going to put this video on a web page on our website and I'm going to put a bunch of information there a bunch of information with links about a national soil temperature map where you can punch in your zip code and find out your soil temperature uh, and also something really important that I think that a lot of people miss is a sort of a chart to say what happens at what temperature in other words at what temperature high does my grass my warm season grass stop growing the foliage stop growing or the root stop What's the low? Um, so there's a good information down there below on the web page that you can sort of read through that and better understand it. Why is soil temperature important? Uh, without going real in depth into it, number one, it, it, we need to know when our microbial activity is happening. In other words, when is all that bacteria and fungus all active inside of our lawns? That's going to determine sort of what we put down on our lawn. If we don't have a good microbial activity, we're not going to put down an organic fertilizer because organic fer fertilizers basically need to be eaten by the microbes and then they get pooped out. <laughs> and that's how the lawn gets its nutrition from them. So we would switch over from any kind of organic or anything that needed microbial activity. We would switch over to something like totally on our super juice. And that's where we are, especially in the spring and in the fall. We really want to concentrate on super juice because it's timing, timing, timing. You have a good rain come in, man, spray that super juice. The super juice is really good because you know exactly when you put it down. The formula is on the website, the super juice formula. Again, we are testing. I'll talk a little bit about that today. We are testing the new formulation of super juice. We hope to have it an all-in-one mixture so that basically all you're doing is just opening up a bag and putting it all in and spraying on your lawn instead of having to get all these different ingredients and mixing it up yourself. So if that comes together this year, we'll have it for uh, maybe in a couple of months. That'll be kind of exciting. So uh, one of the reasons why I'm doing this soil test, soil temperature thing is we have a cold front moving in. We're sort of right in the middle of our testing of our new super juice and a few different products. And unfortunately, the testing is going to be cut short, I'm afraid, because we have a cold snap coming through and I'm afraid it's going to kind of shut everything down. I don't think it's going to send anything into dormancy, but I have one night where I'm going to hit 39 degrees. <laughs> I think that may send a signal to my Bermuda grass. So we're going to watch it. We're going to see what happens, but I'm going to show you real quick. I'm also going to walk you through the four different lawns this morning and just show you because we have finished spraying, doing some treatments and we're at probably about five or six days into this and we're starting to see some really nice green up already from it but let's check the soil temperature so uh i'm starting to get a light green haze on my lawn as you can see this was solid brown before uh last week we applied the super juice and now i'm starting to get a light green haze and i'll show you the other lawns that look really good too so you can see what was chopped in brown See all those new little sprigs there? Those are all new little sprigs coming up from that super juice. So let's check, um, let's check the uh, actual surface temperature here. So it says the very top soil is about 70 degrees. So the very top of it, 69, 70 degrees. So I'm getting 69, 68. Five. So let's just take a little probe here. And let's go down. Now a lot of places use the four inch soil depth. That's what a lot of, um, that's what you'll find a lot of times you'll find a four inch soil depth is really what they're talking about. So I'm down about four inches and I'm at uh, 72 degrees somewhere around there. Let's take another sample.
72. So my surface temperature in the morning, this is morning time, it's about 8 a.m. Surface temperature is about 69 degrees, 68 degrees. Four inch depth, I'm at about average, I would say 72 to 74 degrees. And that's kind of what I want to monitor. What I'm going to do this year is uh, I'm going to sort of go along and sort of monitor what activity, growth activity I have based on the surface temperature and the four inch soil depth temperature. The other important thing about um, soil temperatures too is pre-emergent because you really need to understand you know, uh, crabgrass, let's say. Crabgrass will start to sprout maybe around in the 50s. Uh, other weeds like spurge and other things may start to sprout in the 60s when that's your soil temperature. So you need to understand those things. But you really want to understand sort of what I'm putting down and does it make sense to put it down with these soil temperatures got going on. It's been real important right now. It's been critical of these past two weeks while we've been doing these testings because we went from summer temperature with highs in the 90s and lows in the 70s to bam we went to spring where we've got uh, we're going to have highs in the 70s and lows in the 50s so it has a big impact on the soil temperature so i am going to take you out here in a minute i'm going to show you show you i'm going to physically test my soil temperature i'm also going to test that what i physically test it, how does that compare against the maps uh, the online maps and a formula that you can use. First, if you want a real simple formula, you basically take your high and low for the day for the past three days. So if I have uh, an 80 degree, if I have an 80 degree high and I have a 60 degree low, I add those together, divide those by two, and that's basically my average temperature for the day. And that should be pretty close to your soil temperature. You can take the past three days of that and you can come up with a good reference. And I tested that today. <clears throat> I actually wrote down the numbers here. But I had like a, a high of 83, a low of 68, a high of 81, low of 59, a high of 78, a low of 56. I add all that together, divide it out, and I came out with 70.6. And guess what my soil temperature tested this morning? 70, right at, right about 70, low 70s. So what did I use for testing? Uh, the physical testing, I just used a probe. This is just like a meat thermometer. You can use something like this and actually stick it down because the majority of the people are talking about a four inch depth when they're talking about it. But a lot of the national maps will be at just the upper surface. So they'll be about, you know, just the first, just the first zero to whatever temperature. So you can use a probe. I actually also use a surface temperature probe to see is there a difference between the surface temp and the four inch reading as well. Too. So as an example, I know I still have microbial activity going on. So we've been spraying the lawns with super juice. Uh, yesterday, I actually went and put some organic fertilizer on the front just for the heck of it, just to see if it would still have any reaction out there. Unfortunately, we have some really cool temperatures moving in. I've got one night coming up on Sunday where my low is supposed to be 39 degrees. Man, we're, I'm going to watch and see what that does to our soil temperature. But it really does regulate everything because remember, we scalped this lawn down to almost solid brown just, uh, what, a week ago? We sprayed it with super juice. During the summertime, I'd have a faster reaction, but I still am having all this little fine, fine green growth on my lawn, on Barb's lawn, on the world's worst Bermuda lawn, on Sarah's, all of it. We're seeing that really fine pop of green come up. Morning. <laughs> it's the next morning. It's chilly. Doc is actually in a hoodie. Can you believe it? <laughs> I came out here and I was like, Dude, I'm putting a hoodie on. It's a little chilly. 52 degrees, somewhere around there, 53. Um, it's definitely got a nip in the air out this morning. So anyways, uh, let me go ahead and let's just recheck the temps this morning for the heck of it. 50.3. 49. 48. 48 big difference from yesterday now let's take the four inch I'm letting you see it before I see it so what is it uh, 60 68 or so <clears throat> try to get that sunlight off of it 68 69 so that just shows you that um, the air temperature and the soil temperature have a definite correlation. 
what's going on with my soil. My four inch soil depth is still above 65, which is 65 degrees is right about the active growing temp for uh, Bermuda grass. But uh, real quick, just let me show you the lawns. There's not a lot of light out here, so I don't think it's gonna show up well, but this is, we applied the super juice. Uh, we did put down 10, 10, 10, but I haven't watered, so that has no impact on it yet. So um, I'm gonna show you the four lawns about six days after super juice treatments. And keep in mind, this is cold weather. <laughs> this is cool. And so I've got this light green haze all showing up here. Now this one was scalped completely brown. A lot of green haze showing up here. Same thing on barbs. Look at barbs. Barbs has a really nice green haze. Probably about a half inch of green haze all the way around it. The backside over here. Now there was some armyworm damage in here. But look at, there was armyworm damage in here. But look at this, look at that backside over there. That's really nice and Talk green. Talk about some pretty good little growth there. That's pretty. Now let's walk over to the world's worst Bermuda lawn, which actually right now, I would say is probably one of the best looking lawns in the subdivision. It's green, there's no weeds. Um, you can go back and try and find the old footage of this. Uh, maybe I'll actually put it on for you. But while I'm walking, I'm going to put up the old, what this lawn looked like before. Putting it on a Bermuda grass calendar and doing the right treatments. This lawn, which you would think had no Bermuda in it before. Now look at it. That is just beautiful compared to what it was. And this went through a drought too. But look at that. Look at that Bermuda lawn. Gorgeous. Look at that. That is just beautiful. This is the curb. Again, this was almost solid weeds before. That, that's beautiful. So here's, here's the important point to this whole video in soil temps. Understanding I can't now put down anything like malorganite or organic fertilizers because my microbial activity is going to drop down. So I need to put basically raw chemicals at this point. <laughs> so we're on super juice and I need to put it down fast. Do not put down slow release products at this point. Do not. Um, you want products that are going to go down, that are going to start working immediately to get in there and you do not want to push. I, I just did a video, that NPK video, talking about don't come out here and put a 30-0-0 on your lawn. Broad spectrum, well balanced, all the nutrients. Let the, lawn, let the lawn choose what it wants. It'll tell you, it'll take in what it wants if it's available. Look at this right here. Look at, see, this is how you can tell the new growth. See all this fine little grass right here? That's what I'm talking about. All this fine growth is really, really fine stuff. It's just super, super you fun. Know, you know, just like I do, weather is a funny thing. Um, next week we may come in here and we may go back up to 80 degrees, so I don't really know. I just know that this week is cold. Sunday night, the low is going to be 39 degrees, so we're going to see what happens. Anyways, guys, I hope the soil temp uh, has been helpful for you. Make sure you subscribe for our free year giveaway that we're doing in December. Uh, like the video, hate the video, I don't care. Whichever one, push one of those buttons down there. Leave a comment down below, and uh, I'll see you in a couple days, and we'll do another video.